Hi everyone, I'm Candice Chibito. I purchased this 48 piece set of Art Alternatives illustration markers at Joann's. These alcohol markers were priced at $144, but I had a 50% off coupon, so they cost me only $72, which comes out to $1.50 a marker. Fabulous for alcohol markers. Here on the back are the colors with their names and numbers. I played around a little with these already. Uh, the swatches aren't exact representations of the markers, but you'll get an idea. I'm going to make a card and let you know what I think of the markers. I'm going to use this Lawn Fawns Party Animals stamp set. It's an adorable set. I already have the deer and the fox and the bear already cut out. What I really like about this set is that there are all sorts of little stamps you can add as embellishments on the card to enhance the background or a scene. Another thing is that there are items that the animals can hold, like a present or a cake or a heart, and you don't have to mask the animals. You can just stamp right on their bellies. I'll show you. The hats fit on the animals without masking too. I won't use them this time, but I've made cards with the animals wearing their hats and I didn't have a problem. I'm only going to use the bear and the deer, but the fox is going to hang out for the duration of the video. I'm stamping the gift using Memento's Tuxedo Black. See how nicely the gift fits in the bear's hands or um, paws? I also have the cake. I'm going to let the deer hold the cake. I'm putting the other animals off to the side while I focus on the bear. I'm going to color in with three colors, N5, N2, and C5. I have to check the colors and, and you know, kind of swatch them out because the set is new to me and the colors aren't a perfect match on the box. I'm starting with N5, the darkest of the colors. I'm imagining that the light is coming from the left. There are better colorers in this world than I am. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but I can do a good enough job. The next color is C5, cool gray. I'm going around the outer parts of the bear. That is really hard for me to say. I'm having a hard time getting the caps off the markers. It could be because they're new. It certainly wouldn't stop me from buying them. Now I'm using N2 Neutral. I'll use this for the remainder of the bear's fur and I'll blend as I'm going along. I'm going back to the C5 because I want to put some dots on the bear. I'll dot him all over, giving my gray bear some gray freckles. Now for his snout and ears, I'm going to use E4 Pearl. If I could do the video over, I would shade those areas, but I forgot and I had to do it later. Sorry about that. I'm coloring the gift yellow, so I'm using Y11 Canary and Y4 Citron. I'll use the yellows again later in the card. I'll finish up the gift by coloring the ribbon blue. I'll use B1, which is a pastel, and B2, ice blue. I think the gray markers did a pretty good job. I don't know if you can see it because the light has washed out some of the colors. Uh, but let me set him aside and I'll work on the deer. See if you can see that a little better. I'm beginning with the antlers using E6. I'm still having a hard time pulling the caps off, but it's a small price to pay if they keep the markers nice and dry. Then I'm going around his right side using the same marker. I wish I had a few other colors, but I can practice blending with them or even trying touching one marker to another to make yet another color. Actually, that's the reason I didn't color the fox. I wanted a dark auburn for the fur, and the set just doesn't have it. 
I didn't want to color him using the same colors as this deer, so I just left him out of the card altogether. I also made another shading error here. I should have colored under his neck and arms, so I'll, again, I had to go back and do that later on. Next, I'm using E17 for the rest of his fur. For his ears, belly, face, and hooves, I'm using sand. Now, um, I have two homes that I go between, and I go between them pretty often, so sometimes I make the videos at one location, but I do the voiceovers at another, and this is one of these times. So, although I use sand, I can tell you that, I don't know the number for that one, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. When I played with these colors before I made the video, I wasn't happy with the blending. The overall effect was a blotchy look, but I'm happy with the way the markers are blending now. Maybe they just needed to be used a bit first. I'm shading in with E15, that's a pale pink. I'm coloring both the candle and the frosting with R17, carnation, and I'm shading with R4. For the cake, I'm using E17. It's got to be chocolate, don't you think? And then I'm shading in with E6. Since I'm not using the fox, I want to introduce another element to the card, and I've decided on a balloon. I love balloons on cards. They are such a cheery image. I colored the flame on the candle with Y11 Canary, and I'm using it for the balloon as well. I want to make a connection to it and the gift. Then I'm using Y4 Citrine. I'm leaving a white space for reflected light. I want to build a scene. I cut out some green cardstock with a grassy border, and I'm not sure what company that came from. I have two panels of four by five and a quarter inch cardstock, and I've cut a three and a quarter inch circle out of the top one. I've determined that I only have to color the background up to the pencil line, so I'm putting my animals aside, and I'll color the background blue. I'm using Distress Oxide's China Blue. I'm using one of the makeup brushes that are so popular now. I find that I'm much less heavy-handed when I use these brushes. I have some expensive ones and I have some inexpensive ones, and truthfully, I find they both work well. All right, so this is how it's going to look. I've cut off some of the grass because I don't need all of it, and I'm gluing it to the bottom of the panel. I like to leave the blades of grass unglued so I can play around with them later if I want. I need to check on the placement of my animals. I like the bear on the left and the deer on the right. I'm going to raise them up with foam squares to give this card a 3D look. This gives me room to have the bear hold the balloon. This looks good, but I'm going to set the balloon aside for now because I want to work on the top panel. I want to decorate this top panel, so I'm going to go back to the stamp set and I'm going to choose some of those small stamps. I want to use the party favor and the horn and the ice cream cone too. They'll be the largest of the small stamps that I'll use and I'll come back for some more later. I'm going to speed up this next part. I'm going to color all of the stamps I've selected. I'm starting with the horn and stamping it with Mementos Lavender. Next, I'm taking the party favor and coloring that with Mementos Rosebud. It's okay if I go off the cardstock. I went brown for the ice cream cone, so I'm using Mementos Rich Cocoa. Then for the rest of the panel, I'll fill in with little stamps. The first of the little ones is a spiral of sorts. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's one of my most favorite shapes. I don't know why it's so pleasing to me, but it is, and I use it often, especially when I'm doodling. 
I'm using Summer Sky, Memento Summer Sky. I don't know what this next shape is called either, so I'm calling it confetti. I'm using Memento's cantaloupe for this one. I have a couple more stamps I want to use, but this is filling in nicely. I'm going back to Memento's Rosebud for this little star. And I have one more stamp I want to use, and it's this one, a triangle. For this, I'm stamping with Memento's Pear Tart Dye Ink. Now I'm going to color in the largest of these stamps. The first one I'm going to do are the horns, and I'm using First I'm using V5 Lavender and then uh, V2, which is also a lavender. For the mouthpiece of these horns, I'm using Y11 Canary. I'm using E17 for the cones. It's called Pralines and I think it works well. For the ice cream itself, I'm using E14. I think it makes it look like a vanilla cone, but maybe you think it looks like coffee or butter pecan. I'm shading with E15, and it was just what it needed. The last thing I'm doing on this panel is coloring in the party favor. I'm using R17 Carnation for the main part of it, and the mouthpiece I'm using YG1 Lime. Now it's time to put the two panels together. I want to lift up the top panel to give it some depth. So I'm using strips of two-sided mounting tape. I'm cutting off a strip of the mounting tape for the narrow parts so that the part around the circle won't buckle. And then I'm filling in the center part with more tape because I want to stabilize it. I don't want any sagging. There, that's looking cute, but it needs the balloon in the middle of the frame for some balance. Placing the dimensional at the bottom of the balloon allows me to place it both inside and outside the frame, which gives the card added interest. The white base is just too plain for the card. It needs something, uh, a, dif a different color around it. So I've decided to color the edges of it with Memento Summer Sky Permanent Dye Ink. It matches the inside sky nicely, which is a good thing because I couldn't find Distress Inks China Blue in the mess on my desk. I've cleaned up the ink on my desk and put the panels on the A2 card base. Let me put it aside and show you the stamp set with its coordinating dies. The stamp set is called Wavy Sayings and the dies are simple wavy banners. I particularly like it. I've used it already on several of my cards. The stamp set includes Happy Birthday, Congratulations, Thinking of You, Love You Lots, Feel Better, Waving Hello, You're the Best, Thanks so much and flying by to say. I've selected the happy birthday stamp and I want to show you how I do the stamping. I've cut out a banner on a rectangle of cardstock and put that rectangle inside my Misty. I've also cut out a bunch of banners because it's an efficient use of my time as long as I have the die out. Now I can put a banner in the negative space and arrange my stamp to fit properly over it. I stamp my banner and it's perfect, but if it wasn't, I can restamp it in the exact spot. I'll take this one out and use it on my card, but you can see that I can take another banner, place it in the negative space, and stamp again, or 20 times more, and get the same results. I often make multiples with my dies to save me time later on. Here, I'll do another one to show you just how easily it is to align these perfectly. I then put those stamped banners in with my stamp set so I can pull them out when needed. Here are some more happy birthday banners and um, a feel better one. Already done and ready to go for another day. Here's the banner I just made and I think I'll put it at the top. I'm putting a dimensional on the right side and glue on the left because like the balloon, I want it on the top panel and into the picture itself. This is just an adorable card. I know someone young is going to love it. But I want to get back to the subject of these alcohol markers. 
Maybe you can send me a message to tell me what you think. I think that they're a good alternative to Copic markers, especially when you have to be mindful of expenses. And also, um, if you are just a beginner card maker and you don't want a big expense just yet. Thank you for watching. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye for now.